Hi, this is Scott Wilkinson, host of Home Theater Geeks. In episode 144, I visit various booths at CES 2013 to learn all about 4K and OLED TVs. So stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Home Theater Geeks is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Home Theater Geeks with Scott Wilkinson, recorded January 8th, 2013, episode 144, live from CES 2013. This episode of Home Theater Geeks is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here, live at CES 2013. Can you believe it? 2013 already. I'm going to be going around to various booths here at the show, interviewing people about their new products, most of which are going to involve 4K TV. That's 4,000 pixels across roughly by 2,000 pixels up and down, or four times the resolution of 1080p high definition. Now, you might wonder, why do I need four times the resolution of high definition? High definition looks fine, and you're right, it does. But the manufacturers need to have something new to sell, so they came up with 4K. And there is some benefit to it. Certainly it's sharper and more pristine looking and almost like looking out a window more than HD. They used to say that HD was like looking out a window, but 4K really is looking like looking out a window. Also, there's an advantage with Passive Glasses 3D. For those of you who are interested in 3D, I know not everybody is, but for those of you who are, you can put on a pair of passive glasses, very cheap, very lightweight, very uncomplicated, and see a full resolution 1080p image in each eye. Unlike current passive glasses TVs, which only give you 540 lines of resolution per eye. So that's one big advantage. Um, the other advantage that it, you're gonna hear a lot about is how these TVs upscale 1080p to this new 4K resolution and how much better that looks. I'm not necessarily convinced that it looks all that much better, but the key to the success of 4K is going to be how well it does that. Because for a while anyway, we're not gonna have a large amount of 4K content, native 4K content. Sony has made some announcements about facilitating the content creation of 4K, and we're gonna talk to them later in the show. Uh, and there are other uh, companies that are working on that as well because they realize that without 4K content, people aren't going to spend the ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on a 4K display. So it's going to be a very interesting show and I invite you to come along as we visit Toshiba, LG, Panasonic, Sharp, Samsung, and Sony, among others. Let's go! Hi, it's Scott Wilkinson. We're live at CES at the Toshiba booth. I'm talking with Bruce Walker, a national sales trainer for Toshiba, and uh, you got a lot of news here at the show. Yeah, thanks for coming to the booth. We're really excited to have you here today. Uh, one of the things that's getting the most buzz this year at the show is, is 4K. 4K TVs are everywhere. We're really excited to be on the forefront of this technology, offering some really unique things that are going to make it a fantastic experience for our customers. Now, unlike uh, many TV manufacturers, Toshiba actually makes their own panels, right? Uh, what Toshiba does is, what is important to us is the power of the processing behind the panel. Is we're actually in our second generation of our Sivo engine. In Japan and Europe, we were shipping this in 2012. We shipped those, they were incredible. We took that, we've refined it, we improved it, and now we're shipping that. So we've got proprietary backlight technology, we've got our proprietary Sivo engine, which is really amazing because it's a four, four core processor, for picture quality and a separate dedicated dual core processor for picture processing. Um, because what we're demonstrating on, in our booth is a couple of different technologies. First of all, is it going to be a 4K TV with native 4K content, which is, as you've seen, 
absolutely amazing. Truly amazing, but, di but uh, difficult to get native 4K content. How are you delivering it to the TVs here? Well, right now, how we're delivering it at the show is we're using a red, sorry, we're using a red camera and a red ray player on our 84 inch TV set. But the other thing that I think is important to a lot of users at home who might not have a lot of access to 4K content is they're asking, how's it gonna look on what I own today? Which is what we're demonstrating here in the booth on the three TVs on the left, is we've got those same television sets, our giant 58 inch, our gianter 65 inch, and our amazing 84 inch showing Blu-ray content with that amazing SIVO engine scaling it to 4K. This of course is the most important thing right now for 4K because there isn't a lot of content, there aren't a lot of sources, so we need to be able to see our 1080p content, Blu-ray and broadcast and so on, upscaled well to 4K. Yeah, and we've actually got a demonstration in the booth we might look at in a minute that actually shows side-by-side -side demonstration of 1080p content being shown on a 1080p TV and the same exact content being shown on a 4K TV. And the, the, the results are amazing. Well, let's go take a look. Let's go see it. All right. Now, um, meanwhile, we're going to be walking by all of these TVs here. And you've got some examples of uh, Blu-ray content at 1080p and also native 4K content here, but it's all different. What we're really going to see and what, what I'm interested to see here around the corner is a side-by-side -side demonstration of the same content that is going to be upscaled on one, in one case and not upscaled on the other case. Now we have the two of the same size TVs one of them is 1080p and one of them is 4K, right? 84 inch, yep, right in there. And we're right over here in a nice uh, shadow box kind of area. I love that Toshiba does this at CES. I've seen this now for several years where you have these little uh, shadow boxes. Controlled lighting, so you can, they can experience it the way they might at home versus under the harsh light um, that you'd normally see at a trade show. Exactly, so I'm uh, gonna try not to trip our cameraman. Here is we've got two 84 inch panels. The TV on the left is 1080p. That's the best customers have at home today. Really amazing picture quality based on when, when we were young in the business. It's, it's absolutely amazing. It wasn't even all that long ago that 1080p was like, wow! You know, it's almost unachievable. The TV on the right is our 4K panel, the 84 inch that you saw. And it, both TVs are being fed the same Blu ray and you're looking at 1080p on the left and it's being scaled to 4K on the right, which makes it really amazing, the SIVO engine, because if you th think about it, 4K is four times the resolution of 1080p. So the actual image that's coming into this TV is only about a quarter the size of the TV. So 75% of the picture that you see here is being made up by the TV at 24 frames a second all on the fly. So with all that creation of the image that you have to do, if you don't have the best processing, you have the potential to be riddled with artifacts. And as you can see, it's just absolutely amazing, crystal, crystal clear. We actually have people thinking that this is 4K content. We have to pause the Blu-ray to show them that this is just a regular old Blu-ray. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look with the camera here at the at the two TVs. We're now looking at the left is full HD, 1080p, being displayed at 1080p, and then on the right we have 1080p upscaled to 4K. Now, as you can see on the right here the hair on this guy's head is very sharp. We're, we're zooming in way very close here, yes. so, uh, which, which does give you an idea of how close you can get to 4K. And have it not fall apart. It's still yeah. going to be an amazing picture. Whereas here, on the 1080p signal, or image, uh, the hair is much more uh, indistinct. A little, a little softer. Again, as you, as you get a 1080p image up to this size, you tend to introduce a little more softness to the picture than you would on customers' traditional 32, 40 inch screen size that they have at home. Exactly. Now, I did see a little ringing here, a little uh, haloing around uh, sharp edges. But uh, really, that was only at the paused, uh, in the paused mode, in, the, in this play mode, uh, I don't really see it. It is just absolutely going to be crystal clear. We've got some dedicated processing inside that dual core engine that's specifically designed to maintain edge integrity because we know when we introduce a lot of that stuff, you can get some ringing and banding that they're specifically designed processing to make sure that the edges and detail on those edges is going to be natural without being overblown that can be distracting, particularly to the video file. Now, will these 4K TVs do 3D? These are going to be 3D TV sets, absolutely. That's with passive glasses. I don't know. I we can I'll get, I can get it will be, I believe depending on the size, it will either be active or passive because we're As I recall Toshiba was a proponent of passive glasses and I have to say that one of the another big important improvement or, or 
advantage of 4K for me is the ability to use passive glasses with 3D and still see 1080 lines per line. Yeah, absolutely. It'd still be full 1080p. And again, I'm not exactly, I can't recall off the top of my head where in the line we are active and passive on these. Uh, I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. We'll, we'll find out. Yes, anyway, absolutely. Uh, the, the TVs look fantastic, and I thank you so much for talking right, with us. Thanks for having me. Before we visit our next booth, I wanted to explain a couple things. One is, we found out after we visited Toshiba that their 3D is in fact using passive glasses on the Ultra HD high resolution flat panels. Which is important because, as I think I mentioned before, that allows you to see a full 1080p image in each eye when you're watching 3D. So I was very glad to confirm that Toshiba is in fact using passive 3D, as is LG and some others, as we'll see throughout the show. The other thing I wanted to explain is this whole notion of 4K. I, it, before I mentioned 4K is roughly 4,000 pixels across by 2,000 pixels down, which is true, but there are two versions of 4K, as if we didn't need more confusion. Uh, the professional version, that which you will see in the cinema, in the commercial cinema, is 4,096 pixels across, exactly, by 2160 down. Okay, so that's 4K. Uh, it's the computer version of 4K, right? It's a power of two. The consumer version of 4K is a little different. It's 3840 across by 2160 down. Why is it different? Well, because 3840 by 2160 is exactly four times the number of pixels as 1080p, which is 1920 across by 1080 down. So you take 1920, multiply it by two, you get 3840. Take 1080p, 10, 1080 lines up and down, multiply that by two, you get 2160. So when we talk about 4K in the consumer world here at the Consumer Electronics Show, uh, we're really talking about 3840 by 2160. Now, the Consumer Electronics Association has decided to call this something. They call it Ultra HD or UHD. And some of the companies that are showing product here have, in fact, adopted that terminology. Others have not and still call it 4K. So there is some confusion that I wanted to try and clear up here. When you hear 4K and you're talking about consumer products, such as what we're seeing here today, you're really talking about Ultra HD, 34, uh, 3840, pardon me, by 2160, which is exactly four times the resolution, four times the number of pixels as 1080p. Uh, but when you hear 4K, as it ref if, it, you're, if you're talking about it in the commercial sense, in the professional sense, there are going to be a few more pixels across. But really here at the show, we're talking about 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD, which is sometimes called 4K. So if you can keep all that straight, you're ahead of the game. Hey there, we're in the LG booth, if you can hear me. This incredible video wall is showing 3D, which is why I'm wearing these cool passive glasses. I'm here with uh, Pete Hollenhorst, who's the national product uh, national product trainer uh, for LG, and we're going to be talking about the TVs that you have here at the show. So, uh, welcome. Thank you. And, uh, we've got a really amazing wall, great display. 2013 is going to be some amazing things for you to see, whether it comes to our OLED product or our Ultra HD product. Why don't we go ahead and take a look? Let's go take a look. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, we're going to be, Daryl's going to follow us into the main booth here, which is one of the largest at the show, uh, as LG often is. You've got a huge booth here with so much stuff to see. We're going to end up looking mostly at the OLED TV, which we're going to start with over here as soon as we can uh, work our way through this incredible crowd, which isn't really surprising given the first day of CES and uh, the fact that everyone wants to see the latest and greatest, which in this case is the OLED TV, which is where we're gonna start. Now, LG was one of two companies that introduced an OLED TV last year at CES, all exactly one year ago at this time, and, uh, and now, in fact, it's shipping. 
It is. You know, we uh, we've actually shown OLED or OLED products now for the last four years um, across the board. And it's been really uh, amazing that's out there. And we've teased you with some smaller screen sizes last year. We showed some really large screen sizes as well. And this year we've had a pretty amazing rollout if you've been watching in the press over the last three days. So two days ago we announced that uh, in Korea these models were going to be available um, for pre-order and you could pick them up by the end of the month. Um, just uh, yesterday we announced here in the U.S. market we are 100% shipping in the uh, month of March at a uh, MSRP price point of $12,000. Now $12,000 is a lot of money for a, for a 55 inch. It's 55, right? It is a 55 inch screen size and you know I, I think there is initial sticker shock that's out there but when you see the picture, when you see the black levels, when you see the thinness I think it's pretty impressive across the board in, in terms of what it is that we're able to do. Now what's also interesting, and we don't have a price point on it yet or availability, but we introduced a brand new model just 10 minutes before the show opened across the board, kind of a CES surprise um, that's out there. But we introduced um, a, a wraparound TV. It's actually got a five degree wrap. And what that allows you to do is see just not only that amazing WRGB pixel strategy, but instead of seeing it in a distorted flat view, now you're actually able to see it in that five degree curve that's there. So it's a really immersive picture across the board. That's quite a new announcement. It was not even announced at LG's press conference yesterday. Oh, no, no, it was uh, one of those where uh, we wanted to make sure that everybody that came in today had something new to talk about across the board. Well, let's go check it out. I, I, our, uh, maybe uh, our cameraman's looking at it already but let's take a look a little closer these are curved OLED or OLED screens and uh, unfortunately the camera the microphone cable is getting in the way a little bit here but we're taking a look it, it's quite amazing and uh, you can you can see I guess what you need to do is sit in the in the sweet spot of the curve in order to get that full immersion. Actually, you know, one of the things that I like about the curve is, you know, traditionally when you sit right in that traditional sweet spot that it is a very depth enabled or you see a lot of depth in the overall picture, but I lead a real active lifestyle at my house. I've got small kids that are there. It seems like I'm constantly bouncing around. So having that curved screen, actually, I'm looking forward to that capability. It means that there's not a bad room or bad seat in the house at all. Now. Um it's also true that OLED, one of its strengths, one of its many strengths, is that it has a very wide viewing angle, not like LCD. You can go way far off angle and still see a very, very good picture, which is a, a real advantage when you're talking about a curved screen like this. Oh, it, it, it really is. Now, we haven't come out, uh, literally, this got rolled out 10 minutes before the show. So we were really trying to interview with the engineers, you know, hey, could you talk to us a little bit more about the specs that are out there? We don't have the stated specs in terms of the viewing angle, but I think your audience has already seen. I mean, it's just the viewing angles are incredible off of this product. And it's a really nice addition to the capabilities of what we're able to do with the OLED television. I don't suppose you have pricing on this one yet. No, you know, I offered $5 yesterday, and I'm sorry, this morning, and they, uh, they didn't take it, so it's definitely not $5. Well, certainly, uh, the, an, among the other advantages of OLED are super deep black levels and incredible colors and super thinness, as you said before, much thinner than any TV that we, flat panel TV that we have today. Yeah, you know, in addition to that uh, WRGB color pixel strategy that's out there, I think the infinite contrast, for me, coming from a plasma background, that's that natural lead-in to, towards the OLED product that's out there because it's a direct lit product. Essentially, you know, the, the pixels themselves give off their own luminance that's there. We're able to control any light leakage that comes across, so the black levels are just unparalleled. I, don't, I haven't seen an equal to these blacks in any other product that's out there. I agree. The final thing I want to talk about here before we move on to Ultra HD is you mentioned WRGB. I did. I teased you with that a little bit. You did. And I, and I happen to know something of what that means, that in most TVs, you have three what are called sub-pixels, a red one, a green one, and a blue one, which combine to form any color that they, those three can make, including white. With, with the LG OLED, you've added a white sub-pixel. Why is that? Well, you know, the addition of a white subpixel not only improves not only the color capability that's out there, but it also gives us, uh, I, well, it really probably the best way to explain it is just the color capability that's out there. It also doesn't tax that blue subpixel in OLED products that are out there as, as difficult or as hard. And it's an interesting to note that we're the only ones that are employing that strategy here at the show right now. 
Uh, I would also think it would give you uh, greater brightness overall. I think you know the, the brightness uh, right now speaks for itself. So one of the things that draw, draws me in, like I said, I was a former plasma lover and now a big OLED uh, lover across. It's just the infinite contrast ratio, but probably more importantly is the you know you can't have contrast without really good whites that are out there or, or very accurate brightness, and we do that with these products. Well, they really look fantastic. You've come a long way in a year, and uh, it's going to be great. Why don't we take a look over at our Ultra HD product? That's the other thing we definitely want to look at, because uh, that's the big story at this show, isn't it? It really is. You know, more and more you're seeing other manufacturers, you're seeing the industry talking about that Ultra HD resolution that's out there. So what you're going to see this year from LG is not only an embracement of the Ultra HD strategy, but you're also going to see some unique screen sizes. One of the things that we had talked about during our press conference was the 84-inch product, which has been in the market now, marketplace, just a little over a month and a half and has done really well. The 84-inch, uh, as you can see, is we're talking about four times the uh, picture of traditional HD. Now, for somebody that's a sports or a movie enthusiast, this is definitely the product that you're going to go, you're going to look towards. It's four 42-inch panels, and it creates just a really beautiful image across the board. Now, one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the things that that you're showing here, there's a real advantage of uh, 4K or Ultra HD, is the ability to show 3D with full HD resolution in each eye. It really is, you know, and when we talk about our Cinema 3D story, one of the big things that customers had come back and asked for was that full HD story. And when we talk about Ultra HD or UHD products, really we're able to embrace that full HD 3D story across the board, and it looks really good. It sure does. I mean, wearing these glasses, even as close as we are, uh, it's a really a much better 3D experience than I've had with passive glasses before. And I have to tell you, I've become a passive 3D fan uh, over active simply because the glasses are more comfortable. I wear glasses under these. and well, I, I wear glasses as well. I'm a little bit um, concerned with how I look when I'm doing my product trainings that are out there. So I don't know if you knew this, these glasses that we're wearing, we don't have to wear these glasses. We can go out to any type of uh, lens type of store where they're filling custom prescriptions and at home I actually have a pair of custom filled prescription glasses that are out there. No kidding! lot so I don't have two pairs of glasses on I've just got a single pair of glass now this uses circular polarization real D type uh, 3d right that is we use we use circular polarization uh, which is which is the way to go because it's it's common it's a it's a uh, standard that everybody almost everybody adheres to except for IMAX yeah, and if you promise not to tell my wife the other advantage is is that like last night as I'm watching the uh, the, the playoff game, I'm able to lay down on the couch and I don't lose any of the 3D effect at all. But uh, but she thought I was here in Vegas working. Ah, so. uh, yeah, well, you know, what, stay, what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? I agree. I really <laughs> agree. Let me show you just two other quick things as sure. we scroll down here just a little bit further. One of the other things that we announced during the press conference was the 65 and 55 inch screen size. That's right, smaller screen sizes. Now, the, the 84 has been around, you've been actually been selling it for what, 20,000? Um, so we have an MSRP right now of twenty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five, okay. So uh, twenty-five thousand dollars for our MSRP. It it caters to a very specific audience, somebody that's into sports and movies and wants the absolute biggest screen that's available with the highest resolution. This is a great option. But what we're finding though is, is that a lot of consumers that are out are looking for that sixty-five inch story. They're they're uh, redoing a basement area. They want that traditional home theater. We're also finding that you know a lot of customers are opting to go for that higher resolution or have expressed interest in a higher resolution for that conventional size that we're used to in a 55 inch. So this is a second half product in our 65 and 55 inch product. We don't have pricing yet for this piece, but I think it's going to be a really strong, uh, strong screen size for the Ultra HD resolution. The one question I have about the smaller screen size and Ultra HD is, you know what I'm going to ask, <laughs> it's that the human eye can only resolve a certain amount of detail. And when you get down to 65 and be even worse, 55 inches, the difference between 4K or Ultra HD and 1080p might not be visible. No, I, I, uh, I've heard that as well, but I'll remind you, and I think you have kids as well, my kids tend to set up a little bit closer to the screen than those conventional areas. So for somebody that's wanting a higher resolution that can't get to that 16, 17 foot area, 
where it's ideal and needs to sit closer, a 65 or a 55 inch provides some additional solutions for them. It certainly does give you a greater flexibility in seating distance. You can sit up much closer without the detriments that you would find with a 1080p set in terms of seeing the pixels, seeing any artifacts that might be in the image. Uh, they're much smaller and more um, hidden, shall we say, out in the open <laughs> uh, with a 4K panel than with a 1080p. No, I, I agree. And, you know, the, the other thing, too, is that, you know, that's one of the great things about CES is the variety really is the spice of life. Having additional screen sizes and talking about additional screen sizes makes this whole consortium here for UHD a, a very viable concept that's out there. It's not that we're just focusing on one screen size or one technology that's out there. Really at LG, we believe that life's good. And because life's good, you want to work in multiple different types of technology. So, you know, whether we're talking about our Google TV product or our Ultra HD product or our OLED product, there's a lot of choices here. Well, there certainly does seem to be in this huge booth. And uh, I certainly thank you so much for taking time with us. Pete Hollenhurst. Thanks so much. Hi, we're in the Panasonic booth. I'm with Greg Lee, the training manager at Panasonic, who's going to tell us all about the new plasmas. Hey, Greg. How's it going, Scott? Doing, good, doing great. Thank you. Now, uh, as always, Panasonic's got a bunch of great plasmas here. Uh, I, in my opinion, the best plasmas on the market. Not that there are that many anymore, but I'm sure glad you're still in it because I love plasma. <laughs> well, thanks. We definitely wanted to stay in it. We had, I think, a banner year in terms of performance in the, you know, the series that were out there. We had VT, which I think was recognizable as probably the best display that was available last year. And then the ST was this incredible value that you got this high level performance at incredibly reasonable prices. And it was still a smart T with V with all the good stuff in it. So yeah, we're glad that we're back and we've actually improved on last year's you know, product line. In fact, this year you've got a new flagship, the ZT60, pushing the VT50 down to the number two spot while retaining the ST50, uh, 60 rather, sorry, as, uh, as sort of the value leader. Yeah, we wanted to have three top picks or something, you know, <laughs> we, we wanted three positions out there. So yeah, the ZT has been added to the mix this year and it's been designed for the purist, the person who wants the absolute best picture quality they can get out of the set. So VT was great last year, but we basically took VT, we've turbocharged it, you know, we put the intercooler on it and we have a demonstration that we've been showing. And when the scene goes dark, you can cup the screen right there at the bezel and it's hard to find an illumination. It's kind of hard to tell where the bezel starts and the screen starts. Wow, so you're, you're starting to approach Kuro territory, pardon me for saying so. Well, we'll pardon you for saying so, but yes, they are getting into that area where I think customers that have been waiting for that, you know, vaunted black level performance might have a reason to upgrade this year to a 60 or a 65 inch screen. Fantastic. And the uh, all three of these come in screen sizes up to 65? Uh, on the VT series, yeah, it'll be a 55, a 65 like last year with a new 60 inch size for those people that couldn't fit it in their cabinet. And then the uh, 60 and the 65 on the ZT series. Fantastic. Do we have any prices or shipping information yet? Well, shipping wise, we're expecting all of these product series to be available at the latest between April and May. Now that may change a little bit here and there, but that's a good target for at this point. No pricing information at this point. Not usual at CES to talk about pricing. No, not typically. Everybody's trying to hold their cards close to the vest. Exactly. Now, another interesting um, thing that I learned at the Panasonic press conference yesterday was that, and I've known this already, that Panasonic is getting more and more into LCD TVs. It used to be that Panasonic LCDs went up to a certain screen size and then plasmas took over to the, to the larger screen sizes. No longer true. Uh, no longer true at all. In fact, uh, the largest screen size in LED we have this year matches the largest screen size in plasma. So we'll have 65s in LED, also uh, 60s, 58s, and uh, so yeah, the largest screen sizes we stopped at 55, we're pushing as high as plasma this year. Fantastic. Let's see, go see if we can uh, work our way over and take a look at the LCDs real quick. All right, sounds like a plan. That is if we can uh, get by the huge crowds here in the Panasonic booth, which uh, are certainly justified because we see some beautiful pictures. Here we're looking at the moment at the ZT60, which is the new flagship model uh, plasma. And you can see even in this bright light, the, the blacks are pretty good. They're actually really good. <laughs> In fact, I would agree. Yeah, on this dark scene here, you can barely make out the bezel, and we're in a lighted environment. Exactly. You know, put it into a you know home theater lit room, and it's even a bigger game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then right next door is all of the uh, LCD TVs, which I believe the WT60 is at the flagship. 
You are correct. WT60 replaces the WT50 from last year. It is an IPS panel, so wide viewing angles, and also has the uh, high-speed backlight system. So 240 hertz, eight phase, and it's a brand new system that we're calling 4200 BLS. Now it's a big number, but what we're trying to do is get credit for some of the uh, things like the scan speed, which helps to get the picture to the screen faster, the backlight scanning and the black frame insertion, and just the natural ability of an IPS to do gray to gray better and not just black to white. So it's trying to you know, draw attention to the fact that this TV is a true performer, and uh, in terms of motion resolution, it looks very similar to our plasmas now. Now that big number you mentioned, was that, did that have to do with uh, motion detail, motion resolution? That is you know, kind of like the drive speed, you know, you hear 120 hertz and whatnot. It's kind of a multiplication of all the different factors. Uh, so they come up with this you know, nice big number, but hopefully we'll draw some attention, get people to take a look at it. But the picture is very good, especially under motion conditions, which are always kind of a foible for LED and LCDs. Exactly. Now these are all LED illuminated, right? Correct. We've got the entire line is LED, so we can almost take LCD out of the you know the vocabulary, but we still use the panels. Right. Exactly. And they're all edge lit, right? Uh, we'll have one series at the entry side that will be a direct lit, but from that step, from one step up all the way to the top, it is all edge lit. That's very interesting because you're not the only company to put full array backlighting, LED backlighting behind the entry level LCD. I'm, I'm sure it does not have local dimming, however. No, you are correct. It will not have a local dimming. Well, I'm really interested to look at that entry level as a matter of fact then because one of the problems, of course, as you know, with edge lit LCD is uh, uneven illumination and uh, the backlighting really really takes care of that. Now I'm sure in the WT60 you've taken care of that in, in a number of ways. Exactly. Uh, there is actually a phase filter that we've used on the WT60 that helps to disperse light more evenly. So um, that and then of course you know the, the, uh, the backlight and the diffuser and whatnot have all been optimized. And so last year was kind of our first you know foray into the LED larger screen size high performance category and so we're taking some of the lessons that we learned with plasma trying to create the best picture and so yeah we expect that you know every generation will just get better and better. I'm sure that's true as, as we've seen now over the last few years with Panasonic and others uh, you, you take what you've learned the previous year you apply it to the next year you get something better. That's the way it's supposed to work I think. <laughs> and I think it does. Now before we go I just want to ask you uh, we can't see it from here because it's in the other room but at uh, the president of Panasonic uh, gave a keynote address this morning. It was not announced at the press conference yesterday, but he announced today a 56-inch 4K, rather ultra HD, OLED TV. That is correct. It was actually kept under wraps. We internally were, you know, it was kept very, very secret and was only made, you know, uh, announced and made us aware of what was going on today so we found out after the, you know, the actual keynote address. So wow! So even the employees of Panasonic were kept in the dark. Yeah. So I think that, you know they're very excited about you know the new technology, the fact that it is a you know 56 inch, but being Ultra HD and OLED. So I think that's kind of where we see the industry going, and they're definitely you know aiming or shooting for the stars. I would say. I would say so too. Now that's a more of a technology piece. We're not going to see that this year, probably. Well, I. Can't give any you know ideas on what it is right now. It is a technology piece, and they've made no indication as to when we might accept you know expect a full production product. But the fact that it's sitting up there on that stage gives me you know a lot of you know confidence and excite you know excitement that hey we might see this thing in the not too distant future. I look forward to that as well as looking forward to seeing all of the uh, cool products uh, under perhaps better controlled conditions. They they're looking mighty good even under these bright lights. Thanks. Your opinion means a lot to us. Thank you so much. Hey, before we get back to the show floor at CES, I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is Netflix. Now, Netflix is here at the show, and they're demonstrating 4K streaming, which will be really cool when it happens. Right now, it's in prototype form, of course. But for the moment, you can stream thousands of TV episodes and movies directly to just about any consumer electronics device you have. TVs, smartphones, Blu-ray players, gaming consoles, computers, of course. Just about any consumer electronics device has a Netflix app on it these days, and it can stream all this content to any device that has a screen. Now, for our Twit listeners, there is a 30-day free trial that you can get by going to netflix.com twit. And for those few of you who haven't already tried it and don't already have it, 
I do recommend that you check it out because it's the ultimate inconvenience. You can even start watching on one device and finish on another. So say you wanted to start watching a movie in your home theater and you're going, eh, I'm getting kind of sleepy, maybe I better go to bed, but I want to finish this movie. You can just transfer it and start, finish up where you, uh, where you left off right there in your bedroom or wherever uh, you want. So it's the ultimate inconvenience, really. And you can stream as much as you want for one low monthly fee. Uh, but again, if you haven't tried it yet, be sure to go to netflix.com slash twit and try it out for 30 days. I know you're going to love it. And now, back to the show. Hi, we're in the Sharp booth where there's an awful lot to see here at CES. I'm with Mark Viken, uh, president, Vice President... Brand Marketing. Brand Marketing for Sharp. A uh, fairly big wig, shall we say? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and we've got. Better than I'd like to be, but yeah. yeah well, me too. Uh, but we've got, Sharp has an awful lot to show us here. Uh, it, we're starting with with something that's more of a technology demonstration, but it's pretty impressive. Yeah, this is really a glimpse into the future of what uh, television and viewing can be about. This is an 8K television versus the industry is talking about 4K and then uh, HD is considered 1K. So this is eight times the resolution of a current HD television. To put it another way, a standard HD TV is two million pixels. Yep. This is 32 million pixels. And it's, it's 3D in the sense that it's not images popping out at you, but it's like looking into a window because there's so much detail. And what we're looking at here on the, sc on the screen is actual native 8K content shot by NHK, the national broadcaster in Japan. You are correct. There, there's only one or two 8, 8K cameras in the world right now, and they have them. And they have them, and we're looking at it here. And I mean, you can go right up to that screen and put your nose on the screen. You won't see a pixel. Uh, you can go right up, as you said, right up to it. You don't see a pixel. It's amazing. We're, we're trying to get a whole look at that picture of sunflowers. That is just amazing how clear and detailed that is. You're right, it's like looking out a window. It's, it's like 3D, but into the television, not outside the television. Right, right. There's no fake stuff shooting out at you. No, you don't need glasses, obviously, because of the high resolution. Right. Now, in the more uh, realistic realm, at least what, what's going to be available more recently, more sooner than this, uh, <clears throat> we've, Sharp had a ton of stuff to show us, including uh, some Ultra HD 4K. Correct. In fact, two different types. Uh, we have two types. Should we walk over? There? Let's go. Yeah. Okay. I just uh, why don't you go ahead, go ahead of me here, because I need to uh, make sure you don't trip on the cable. <laughs> but uh, here at the Sharp booth, we're gonna start. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna start over here. I think. Okay. Right. Uh, seems seems to be the better place to start, uh, which in fact uh, is not 4K. We're gonna start by one of your new technologies before we get to 4K. Uh, which is Quatron. Now, Quatron isn't new. It's been around for a couple of years in which you add a yellow subpixel to red, green, and blue. Correct. So a standard HD television set has red, green, and blue, as you said, which is 6 million subpixels. We add a yellow pixel, which gets it up to 8 million subpixels. And because of the yellow, it's inherently brighter, and you can go brighter and still maintain color accuracy. This has always been my concern about Quatron, that adding the yellow pixel would, in fact, affect the accuracy of the color in some way. You're saying no. No, it does not. It, well, it really depends on how you set it, but you can set it in the completely accurate way, but you still get the great benefits of brightness uh, and contrast, and you get the color accuracy while going brighter, and that's what benefits. Yeah. Now, uh, this year you announced uh, the second generation of Quatron and something pretty exciting. Yeah, it's a, uh, we're using the standard Quatron panel, but a software algorithm that subdivides the pixels and uses all 8 million pixels, and it gets very close to, if not almost the same, as Ultra HD, which is the very uh, leading edge technology right now, and we're planning on launching this next year. Next year, okay. So uh, we have a demonstration, I think, over here, which, uh, in which we have a split screen. And we can see, I'm going to step off to the side here, we can see uh, on the, well, why don't you explain to us what we're seeing? Well, on the, on the, again, this is uh, the same panel across, and on the left side is a standard HD television picture, and on the right side is the next generation of Quatron, which is the uh, software and the processing that subdivides the pixels 
subdivides the subpixels, actually. Yeah, the subpixels, thank you very much, which gets you very close to uh, Ultra HD resolution. And you can see here in the split screen, on the left, uh, the image looks fine, but on the right, it's quite a bit sharper. It's far more detailed and, uh, again, very close to Ultra HD. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Ultra HD now, which is coming around the, we're going to come around the corner. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. And uh, <coughs> the sizes that uh, you have here for Ultra HD include? Well, we have two sizes we're showing here. Um, we have a 60 inch, which is our ICC Purios Ultra HD. And we're going to take a walk over there a little bit later. So this is the Aquos Ultra HD 70 inch panel that we're showing right here. Now, I should, I should point out that unlike almost everybody else uh, at the show who's showing Ultra HD, uh, Sharp has two distinct lines of Ultra HD TVs. We're looking right now at uh, the Aquos right. brand. Yeah, this is the Aquos brand. This will be launched in the second half of uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, the picture is just phenomenal. This is native 4K content that we're pumping through here. And uh, I think it's just it's stunning. Oh, it, it really does look great. And on top of the Ultra HD technology, we've added a new film to the screen which we're calling moth eye, which is uh, fairly well known within the optical industry. But it mimics the way a moth's eye absorbs and reflects light. So you don't get the reflection and the glare that you typically would get on a screen. And it's again, literally like looking through a window without reflections. So the main <clears throat> purpose of moth eye is to reduce a glare and reflections. Correct, which get, and then you can have high brightness, high contrast, without getting any uh, reflections in a bright room or from lights in the room. Now there's a demo over here I want to make sure we, we check out sure. because it's very cool. It is looking at, we have a three-way split screen here. Tell us what we're looking at. Well, I hope the camera can pick it up, but the, uh, the far right and the far left are the two leading types of anti-glare or types of screens. And in the center is the moth eye screen. And, uh, I'm not sure if it's coming across in the let's, camera, but let's see if we can go. hang on one second. A little reflection, if any, in the center versus the other two types. Let's see if we can get. Uh, uh, yeah, hang on a second here. So we're looking at this split screen with the moth eye film on the center, and then at the other side, on either side of it, are the more conventional anti-glare type screens. That's right. That's right. Particularly, you can see the difference if you. Um, Oh, right here, you can see it quite a bit. See, see my hand over here? I'm kind of waving in the reflection. Yep. And over here, you don't see it at all. It does seem to make the blacks deeper as well. Well, because you've got that high contrast, high brightness without worrying about the reflections. So it's very, very clear looking. On the, uh, <clears throat> on the right side here, it's, it's a kind of a diffuse reflection. It's more like a matte, typical matte That's screen. And on the, on the left, we have a much more shiny, glossy finish, which a lot of LCDs are using these days. It, and it's usually a trade-off between having the, the higher contrast but reflections versus uh, less reflection, but then you lose some of the picture quality. Are you going to use any, uh, this moth eye technology on any of your um, standard uh, high-definition high displays? To be determined, but that's certainly a possibility, yes. It's a film that, that gets added to the to the screen, right? Yes, and there's a non-screen demonstration of it here. The center section uses the moth eye film in this uh, display here, and uh, the other two are the same. And probably it's best to get a kind of straight on shot, but it's almost like there's not any glass in the center versus the, the top and the bottom. Yeah, I can see that. So that that's a totally passive technology, just a matter of a film being placed on a screen. It's not electronics, it's the way the film is designed and it's, uh, we, Sharp's developed a unique process to apply that to the screen. Now, let's go take a look at the other type of Ultra HD flat panel that Sharp introduced here. Can we, we uh, make a stop and look at the 90 inch first? Yes, and I was gonna say, while we, as we go, we're gonna stop and look at the 90 inch uh, standard HD standard <laughs> HD is almost standard def now I mean you know but these are these are 1080p 
Um, LED backlit. They use, uh, it's 90 inches, so it's six foot, eight inches wide and nearly four feet tall. And it uses less power than two 75 watt light bulbs to run this television set. Wow, wow. A huge big screen experience with, frankly, what I would say is an amazing picture. Sure. Uh, and, and it's 90 inches, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, is the largest commercially available flat panel, at least in the mainstream. Uh, it is the world's largest LED television that is actually for sale. Yes. Now, Sharp for you. Prototypes, but yeah. shipping is different. Than shipping is a different thing, yeah. exactly. So, uh, Sharp, of course, is specializes in the larger screen sizes. I don't think you make anything lower than 60, right? Uh, yeah, we do have sizes below 60, but 60 and above is Sharp's focus. Right. So, you have 60, 70, 80, and 90. 90. Yes, that's correct. We'll make a quick stop here. We'd like to technology yes uh, so many things to see here can, can, can we look at is this something that we can look at with IGZO uh, well what this is demonstrating in a kind of a fun game like way is the uh, one of the great benefits of IGZO on top of being ultra high resolution on top of being very very touch sensitive and accurate in its touch what this is showing is that this technology you don't have to apply current continuously to view it on the screen. So when there's still images or content that isn't moving, you don't need to reapply power. So what that does is reduces the power consumption on, let's say, a cell phone or a tablet by up to about 80%. Now, let's let's explain that IGZO stands for indium, gallium, uh, zinc, zinc, and oxide. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's basically it's basically a new uh, well not new necessarily but a, a, a type of semiconductor. It's a new type of semi semiconductor technology, yes. Right. And one of the benefits that I saw in the press conference yesterday was that it makes the transistors, which are used to control the individual subpixels, much smaller. Yes, which is why it's inherently 4K and uh, gives you that ultra high resolution, and it it also gives you that very precise uh, touch control. And right now it's being used mostly in, as you said, smaller screens, smartphones. Shipping now in, in the market in Japan and smartphones and sharp smartphones yeah. and sharp uh, tablets, yes. But eventually we should be able to see this in larger TVs, huh? Uh, the technology definitely can be applied. Very good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Which is another benefit of uh, the IGZO technology and that is it's a uh, flexible screen. It's on oh, the, that's cool. It's on the very end. <laughs> We're running out of mic cable here, but uh, here we go. Here's, a, here's the flexible IGZO uh, screen, which is basically bendable, looks almost like a, like, a, like a bendable piece of plastic. So you could almost imagine on the left here, if that were a, you know, a wristwatch or, or a smartphone that went on your arm, it could bend around your arm. And there's tons of other applications for that kind of um, flexible screen and this is demonstrating that if it were on a smartphone the smartphone itself could be flexible so if it's in your pocket and you sit down you probably wouldn't break it. <laughs> <laughs> now this is an OLED as opposed to LCD. Well IGZO can be applied to OLED as well as uh, other other forms of technology. Yeah. Because after all OLED and LCD both need transistors to switch them on and off. You know better than I do that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay now Finally, we're going to go and see the ICC Purios, which is a, the other form of of Ultra HD Correct. that that uh, Sharp is introducing here. Why did you come up with two different types of Ultra HD? What this is demonstrating is uh, it is an Ultra HD panel, but of course today there's no Ultra HD content, yes. which is a, a, a concern. And uh, in addition to that. This technology um, recreates the way the human eye looks at light. So ICC, by the way, uh, stands for Integrated Cognitive Creation. Right, and it was actually a technology developed by iCubed is the name of the company, and Sharp and iCubed have been working together on it. So this is a processor or a processing technology yeah. that uh, mimics the way the brain perceives light and images. And uh, you know when you look 
look into the world normally, th th things are, um, you know, in television quite often, it's in, it's in focus in the front, but not in focus in the back. And you can see a little bit of that in the demonstration here. So we're, what are we, we're looking at a regular panel on the left and an ICC Puros. Right. Both, are both of them 4K? They're both 4K, but you'll see that there's a lot more depth. It's like you could almost reach into the screen and touch the mountain there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a combination of Ultra HD technology from the panel, but the ICC processing technology on top of that recreates this ultimate experience that you're seeing here. It's almost like you don't need 3D uh, you know, glasses or it's, 3D content. No, it's what I would call natural 3D versus the glasses and the kind of trickery of, of what that does. Well, this is very exciting because a lot of people don't like having to wear glasses uh, and so on. People do not, and the experience can be a little tiring depending on uh, the person. But this is, again, because of the detail, because of the uh, uh, cognitive creation of seeing the depth, it feels like it's 3D. And it, this is also the first uh, television to in the Ultra HD category to garner the THX certification. I'm glad you mentioned that. I wanted to make sure we got that in there because THX now certifies displays. They've been certifying uh, 1080p, high def TVs for a while, and 3D TVs for a while. This is the first Ultra HD they've first, certified. First Ultra HD to bear that mark, yes. And uh, when do we expect to see this in the market? Uh, this will be in the second half of uh, this year in the United States. And uh, I believe it's next, next month, if I'm not mistaken, in Japan. We don't have any pricing yet, do we? Well, in Japan, it was announced at about a $31,000 price point, but uh, we'll see what, what, where it comes in the U.S. I'm sorry, what was the size on this? This is a 60-inch. Is that the only size going to be available? For the, for the moment. For the moment, yes. Uh, part of that is because um, the, the processing chip is specifically designed to the size of the screen, so it takes a little bit more development time to offer it in other screen sizes. Well, there's certainly an awful lot at Sharp to be proud of and to be excited about. We're, so we're thrilled about where we're headed and what we're doing, and uh, you know whether it's the largest television or Ultra HD or ICC Purios or IGZO, which is really, I think, one of the most exciting display technologies introduced in this decade. We've or MothEye or 8K or next generation of Quatron. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're, we got a lot to talk about. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, we're in the Samsung booth. I'm talking with Scott Cohen, National Training Manager at Samsung. We're going to be looking at a few things here in the booth, which is, again, a gigantic booth here at Samsung. The uh, first product that we're going to look at is your UHD, Ultra HD 4K display, which has some unique features to it. Yep. Yeah, what we have here is an 85 inch right behind us. We're also showing 110 and we're showing a 95. And we also have a 65 here on display. Now these are backlit LED TVs with local dimming. So really gonna be able to get the darkest and blacks and the brightest and whites with the LED. What, one thing you might notice is the stand that these are on is a lot different. It's our timeless stand. And we actually have speakers built into the stand that help out with the audio. In addition, the stand allows for the TV to be tilted forwards, backwards, or right up and down on a track. So really, depending on your viewing environment, this is going to fit. You can also mount it on the wall with or without the frame. So really versatile. So the speakers are actually in, mounted in this frame right here. Correct, there's two speakers in the frame. They're three-way speakers, so woofer, mid-range, sweeter. And then there's two woofers inside the TV itself. And the TV, as we see, can be tilted. It's now tilted away from the actual angle of the stand, and it can be moved up and down. It can be moved up and down. We can tilt it back. We can tilt it, as you see the TV on the top, we have it tilted forward because it's high up. So really versatile, and as I said, can be wall mounted. But what's great about our ultra high definition TVs is they carry the full Samsung suite of Smart Hub. So you have all the connectivity features, you have a video on demand, you have social networking like Facebook, and voice and gesture control which has been greatly improved over last year. You introduced that first last year, and now, according to the press conference, uh, things have improved greatly in the last year. Absolutely. Last year it was introduced, we had limited a number of commands and limited numbers of ways of speaking to the TV. This year it's more natural. I can ask the TV, is there any football on? If football is on, it will bring up the channels and tell me where to go. So it's uh, natural language processing. Exactly. Natural language. Very good. And as you said before, LED local dimming. Uh, this is the only... UHD display that I know of that does that. All the rest of them are edge lit. 
Right, yeah, we went with a backlit full array on this. It's a much larger screen. UHDs tend to be larger, so backlit is the way we decided to go with this. I, and I think you were wise. I, I certainly uh, much prefer uh, backlight with local dimming because of that increased contrast, the greater uniformity of illumination. There are all kinds of advantages. It's more expensive to do, of course, but... Of course, yeah, more expensive, but worth it. When you're looking at a flagship piece like this, we don't want to sacrifice anything. Attention to detail. Make sure it has all the features of other TVs, and make sure it has a picture quality that's second to none. And you say you, you go up to 110 inches on this. Yeah, the 110 inches just to the right up there. So we, we're showing two of them today. Um, and, you know, if, if the market sees need for it, we'll make them. Do we have any sort of sense of pricing on these? We don't have a sense of pricing. We can tell you the 85 inch will be out this summer. Fantastic. Well, let's go uh, take a look at the flagship LCDs that are uh, high definition. I almost said standard definition. I mean, after this. But uh, you've got some really nice... 1080p looking LCDs. Let's go check them out. Absolutely. We'll look at the F8000 right now. All right. We're back taking a look at the F8000 flagship LCD TV from Samsung. Uh, tell us what distinguishes this model. Well, the F8000 is an edge-lit LED TV. Uh, obviously, it uses an LCD panel, but LED for lights. And one of the things that we've improved from last year is this TV now has something called precision black dimming. So what we're doing is we're actually individually dimming the LEDs along the edge, very similar to local dimming with full array, but we're doing it with edge-lit. In addition to doing that, we're doing stuff in software called Micro Dimming Ultimate, and what we're doing is looking at little boxes here and giving uh, each box a macro uh, contrast, color, and detail enhancement to really give this TV the best picture possible. Now you've been doing that uh, pseudo local dimming or what what might be called local dimming with edge lit for a while. I assume you've just improved that technology? Well last year it was just software based. This year it's hardware and software based. Very similar to the ES9000 from this year. So we are not just playing in software. Each LED can be individually controlled. It is mapped out to where it is on the screen so we can get the darkest blacks a local dimming effect on an edge lit TV. In addition uh, the 8000 has a beautiful new design with what's called our arc stand, which gives it this floating bezel look, where if it's sitting on a shelf, it kind of looks like it's floating. So really uh, a unique design feature, um, which is going to help the TV fit in in any decor. Now, on top of that, Samsung has a host of new features. Our Smart Hub feature is, is significantly improved. Our voice and, and gesture is significantly improved. Even the camera is significantly improved. One of the things customers said is, hey, I'm not using the camera. I don't want to see it. So we have it retractable. So if I pop this up, as you can see, the camera comes into play. And now you would be able to use gesture control, Skype, or any of the other things you might need a camera for. But if you don't use the camera, you can get rid of it. That's right. You could just hide it right down in the bezel. It makes the top of the bezel look nice nice and flat. It's a nice clean look that a lot of people are looking for. And you can pop the camera out when you see need fit. In addition, Samsung's new Smart Hub has uh, greatly evolved from last year. This year we have five panels to simplify it for customers. We have panels being uh, it's like a page on the screen. A page on the screen. So you have these five different pages that you can go between. And am I correct? Did I understand correctly at this press conference they said when you power up the TV, it powers up into Smart Hub? Um, it'll power, you can have it power up to Smart Hub if you so choose. What we do have is something called S recommendation. And what we're doing is we're looking at what you're watching, and then we're going to make recommendations based on your viewing habits. So if you're watching a lot of you know, cartoons, we'll recommend other cartoons. You're a big ESPN sports guy, we'll be recommending other sports programs. We can look into your guide, so whether you're uh, cable, dish, or Fios, or AT&T, we will work with your, your, your television uh, uh, cable box so that we can uh, get you to what channels you want and make recommendations. This year's natural language would actually allow you to say, are the New York Yankees playing right now? And if they are, it will tell you what channel it is, and then you'd uh, have the option to go there. So one of our panels is what's on TV. It's our S recommendation for TV. We have another panel or page on the set, which is just going to be for video on demand. So if you're searching for a specific movie, maybe you're in the mood to see Top Gun or Ocean's Eleven, you can hit the search button there, and it's going to search our video content providers. So Netflix, who, uh, Vudu, uh, Cinema Now, Samsung Media Hub. We also have social networking, Twitter, Facebook, Skype on a separate panel. And what's really cool about that is I can have it set so I'm watching TV full screen. If someone updates their status on Facebook, I'll get a notification overlaid over live TV. So now I can keep an eye on Facebook when I'm not keeping an eye on Facebook. Um, we have another page just for all your apps. All your apps will reside there. It's very similar to your smartphone when you open up your apps. So that'll be there. And then the last one is uh, what we're calling All Share. Um, 
Samsung's version of DLNA, uh, allowing you from our Galaxy Notes or our Galaxy S3 phones to cameras, everything is going to be able to share content right up to the TV wirelessly. And what's great is that the A8000, besides uh, having Wi-Fi built in, if your home doesn't have a Wi-Fi router, not a problem. This TV can act as a hotspot and you can sync up your Wi-Fi camera, your phones or whatever, and go direct to the TV. So really, uh, a, a huge, versatile TV that, you know, the sky is the limit. Now, we, we, you wanted to point out something on the back panel here. If you can see, there's no visible connections. We're clawing at our clean back design. A lot of our customers have stated they put this on a shelf, and the back is visible. So here we are looking at the back. No wires seen. Very nice, very neat, and very clean. Beautiful. Now, also on this stand, we we're seeing some of the... Um, uh, some of the other models. This is the F8000. The F8000 here. What we're seeing, this is the flagship, right? It's the flagship. That there is the 7500. It's one step down, so you're not going to have that, that precision black dimming. And you're also not getting the floating bezel stand. You're getting our quad stand, which is great. The quad stand is a, is a swi you can swivel it, which makes any seat in the house a great seat in the house with Samsung. And then we have another minimal uh, style stand, which will be found on a 6400 and the 6800 which can be seen there, which is called our branch uh, design. And it's also very minimal. You know, we're trying to make the TV about the TV. If you look at our bezels, 0.5 inches, when you're looking at a Samsung TV, it's picture edge to edge. Now, in uh, 2012, you had the EH 6000 and 5000 series, entry level LCDs with LED backlighting, not with local dimming. Right. Are you going to have anything like that in the 2013 line? Yes, we're going to continue with backlit up until the 7000 series. Uh, those backlit TVs are not local dimming. Um, we're doing it for, for price and picture performance. Uh, then when you step up to the 7 series, you're getting to 240 hertz. You're getting into our edge lit, which is going to give you the much better, thinner design, uh, which uh, you know has been very appealing for our customers. Great. Let's go take a look at OLED. Absolutely. Okay, next up in the Samsung booth, uh, we're standing in front of the OLED, or OLED. And uh, this was something that uh, Samsung announced last year. And uh, now you're back. We still don't have, we still can't buy it in the store, can we? No, it's not available yet. It's, uh, it'll be available in 2013 in a 55 inch, which is what we see behind us. We're really excited about our OLED is that we're using RGB or red, green, blue subpixel instead of using white and a color filter. This is going to give us a better color gamut and we believe going to give us a brighter, a brighter white. Um, in addition, better color palette. So that's what we're doing here in 55 inch. And the advantage of OL OLED is going to be power consumption, thinness, weight, um, and black level, black level, bright level. So there's plenty of things to be excited about with OLED. No kidding. Um, however, everyone's doing OLED this year, right? So not, not everyone. There, there's a few of them here. So we want to differentiate our Samsung out. So one of the things we're showing this year is dual view, where two people can watch two separate programs on the same TV at the same time. And what would happen is you put both channels on, they overlay over one another, and then you wear our special uh, special glasses, and that will allow you to either see picture A or picture B. Now, are these active glasses or passive glasses? They're active glasses. So since the TV can flash at 240 hertz, frame one is yours, frame two is mine, frame three is yours, and, and we can enjoy it. But however, one thing we brought in this, brought in this year is being able to do dual view with 3D. So let's say you want to watch the football game, I want to play a video game, we both want to do it in 3D, we both can. So that's really something special this year that you can have that 3D feature, two separate programs, same time. Now the reason that you can do this with OLED, I think, is because the super fast switching times that OLED offers, something like a thousand times faster than LCDs can switch. That is correct. Essentially the decay time for OLED is pretty much instant. So after one image is shown, it just decays and disappears immediately, so there's no what we call crosstalk. Um, but OLED seems to really be the only technology that is fast enough to do it, unless we want to take a uh, you know, a time to go back in time and go to DLP, which was the other technology that would have been fast enough to do it. But DLP now is, is gone, finally gone. It's with the black and white TVs. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other interesting thing here uh, in the OLED section of your booth is a curved LED screen. It's a curved OLED screen, yeah. And we could take a walk over and look at it. What, 
we are showing here is that Samsung has been a leader in OLED, and while some people may just associate OLED with TV, Samsung has been putting OLED into phones and cameras for a long time now. So we've become a very, very good expert at it, and what we're showcasing here is the future of, of OLED, that it can be curved, it can be bent, it can be flexible. Um, this TV here is a prototype, it's just a, it's a showcase piece to show what the future holds and what Samsung can do. So you're getting all the benefits of the OLED with the black levels and the bright that you see now, but it's in a curved screen, which is going to be a little bit more immersive, give you slightly better off-axis uh, off viewing. Well, OLED gives you great off-axis viewing anyway, which, right. which I think makes the curved screen more possible and feasible than a traditional LED, if you could even curve it, which you probably can't. Yeah. Can't do it, because <laughs> of the lighting, but uh, with OLED being self-illuminating, you can do funny things like curve it, and uh, who knows what the future holds as to what other shapes and forms we'll see it in. Exactly. And certainly the black levels and the colors and everything are just phenomenal on this. I can't wait for it to come to market. Oh, I can't wait either because I know I'm getting one immediately. <laughs> okay, our final stop is over at the plasmas. Yeah, look at plasma. I'm certainly glad that Samsung is staying in the plasma business because I really do like the look of plasma. I'm a plasma fan myself um, and not just are we staying in the game, we're making significant investments. So let's take a look over at the F8500, which is our new super contrast panel. Let's do. Our final stop in the Samsung booth is uh, with the plasmas, one of my personal favorite types of displays, as long as I can't get OLED yet. But uh, you're going to tell us now about the flagship, uh, what is it, the F8500 Plasma? Yeah, the F8500 Plasma is uh, what's right behind me. It's going to be available in three sizes. You're looking at the 63-inch uh, right behind me, I mean 64-inch right behind me. Um, one of the things that Samsung did is we've managed to increase the contrast level. We've gotten the blacks blacker, we've gotten the, brights, the, the whites brighter. Um, we're able to get more light output out of our TV by making the walls of the pixels thinner. So since the walls are thinner, there's more surface area for light to emit, therefore the picture is brighter without overdriving the pixel or the panel. So we're getting brightness very similar to LED without that that the crushing of the blacks that, that some LEDs are known to do. So you're still going to have that grayscale. So if you're a big film buff, and you know, in, in film there's lots of grayscale, this is the TV you're going to want to watch it on. Now me personally, I'm a plasma guy myself, which is why I'm so excited about OLED, because this is refreshed at 60 hertz. However, with the pixel speed, you don't need to have any of that auto motion. So you're really getting a, a the similar motion to what you were used to on a tube TV. Exactly. Uh, LED, LCD TVs have implemented a number of of improvements or enhancements like backlight flashing, uh, frame interpolation, and so on, in order to overcome shortcomings that plasma doesn't have in the first place. Exactly. Um, the plasma doesn't suffer from motion issues that LCD pixels cause, and Samsung has done an amazing job of overcoming every obstacle in our LED lineup. However, like you said, this plasma behind me doesn't need to overcome any of that. The biggest thing we needed to overcome was to get it as bright as our LEDs, and we've done this with our new pixel structure. So we really believe this is going to compete, um, you know, with LED head to head. But you know, just with the way industry is, you're going to get better bang for your buck with plasma. Price per inch is better. Gen generally so. Uh, the, certainly the problem with problem, the limitation with plasma is that the brighter the picture is, the more white there is on the screen, the less overall light comes out. There's, it's like the, you've got a, a bucket of light and you can either put it in one little area and it comes out super bright, or you can put it over the entire screen and it's not so bright. Right, right. Well, this here with the new pixel structure is supposed to give us better uniformity of brights and blacks. So I think we're going to have a reference piece here. This is probably going to be you know, the, the piece that most of the reviewers would like to get their hands on and maybe not return. <laughs> Well, I'm, I might very well be one of them. Do we have any idea of shipping or pricing on this? Uh, they'll be shipping in March. Uh, don't have pricing right now. Well, as, as usual at CES, that's that's a normal thing. But, you know, it's going to be coming out in the spring, so uh, I'm certainly looking forward to putting it through its paces. Uh, I, mean, I hope you get one soon, and I'm looking forward to getting one in my house. All right. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you for, uh, thank you for stopping at Samsung. Here we are in the Sony booth. I'm talking with Phil Jones, uh, National Training Manager. Mm -hmm. You can just say that. That'll work. Uh, that works. <laughs> and uh, we're talking, obviously, about UHD 4K, which is the big story at the show. Yes. And Sony has 
uh, a number of announcements in that regard. Tell us about it. Yes. Well, you know, I'm sure you're aware that we released an 84-inch 4K Ultra HD TV last year. Well, now we're adding a 55 and a 65-inch um, 4K Ultra HD TV to the lineup, and those will be available in late spring. For less than the 84-inch, of course. Substantially less. We always say you aspire to own a 84-inch. The 65 and a 55 will be attainable. Now, one of the interesting things about the 55 and 65 is a new sound system using something called magnetic fluid speakers. I, this is not to do with 4K specifically, but I really am curious about that. Okay. Well, what happened was, if you look at a lot of our of our sound bars and a lot of our speakers um, systems that are found in our audio systems, it uses a new type of driver. A dri most drivers have a cone and a damper. The damper keeps the cone aligned and keeps it from going into over excursion. By using magnetic fluid, we can control that without having to have the damper in there. But moving the damper makes it more efficient and it makes this, it slimmer so it plays louder with less distortion. So it's a really cool, it's really cool design and we've added it to this TV. The television set has a soft dome tweeter, it has a woofer, it has a, pa a passive radiator and it has a subwoofer, two subwoofers under it. So it's the best sound of any TV we've ever made. Fantastic. What other features uh, can we expect to see in the uh, Ultra HD, the, the new models? Well, one thing we always want to stress is a buying a Sony 4K Ultra HD TV, it is the best TV to watch HD on. So whether you're watching your Blu-ray or your broadcast, it's going to upscale that to glorious 4K Ultra HD. Which is very important because there isn't very much 4K material out available to consumers yet. Exactly. And what separates us from the competition and anybody else is when you walk into a movie theater, three out of every four digital 4K cinemas in the world have a Sony 4K projector. There's only been 100 movies shot in 4K. All those other movies that you're paying 12 bucks for have been upscaled by the projector to 36 feet or 30 feet. And we've proven that we can do it at 30 feet, so we know we can do it in, in 65 and 55. Fantastic. Now, you said only 100 movies have been shot at 4K, which means that most of what we see in those 4K theaters is actually 2K upconverted. Up, exactly, 2K upconverted. But also, 4K has other advantages. It is a great way to experience 3D. Now, I've always thought so, especially with passive glasses. Exactly. Passive glasses, no flicker, no batteries. It's, um, you can have prescription ones. You, it just gives you the great, a ton of convenience. But, for, but the reason why we always say active for HD is you're trying to give you the maximum resolution on each eye. The TV has four times the resolution of an HD TV. So even if you cut it in half, it still meets or exceeds the resolution of any active 3D TV. The other feature that uh, we're only going to touch upon here, and maybe I'll have you back on the show to talk in more depth, something called triluminous. You've you've come up with some new backlight technology. Yes. By by with a new backlight technology and processing, we're able to we're able to expand the color gamut. Think of if you at first you had a box of 64 crayons, now you have a box of 128 crayons. And the way it works is in our TVs, we've always had um, our high-end TVs. We have we've always had what's called an X reality processor, and in that process is a database of shapes, patterns, and textures. So when it sees a signal, it knows what that signal would look like in HD or 4K. Well, now they added a color palette to it. So now when it makes the, the exchange, it's based on the signal and what we know that signal should look like at the higher resolutions. So and at the wider color gamut. The wider color gamut. And what you'll notice is the red to be super vivid without being overexposed. If you try to take a TV and push it, a regular HD TV, and push it to that color gamut, it would wash out all the details in the red. And our HD, a lot, several of our HD TVs, as well as the 65 and 55, use this backlighting. And, and it's uh, basically, I was uh, led to believe during the press conference, I asked somebody that it was white LEDs on the edge that are going through some sort of prisms. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a process to expand, to, to purify and expand the, the white. Because if you look at um, color space, zero to um, 255 red, green, and blue makes white. Right. Well, if I make 300 red, green, and white, red, green, and blue, guess what I get? White. So by having the, the ability to expand that color gamut, I can still, and, and I get more choices to choose from. So we're not shifting or changing the balance of the color, we're just pushing the color out more towards real life. Now, there's one more thing we want to talk about for, for 3D. We talked about the fact that TV will do passive 3D. Another feature is called SimoView. SimoView, basically what it is, if I put you, give you the 3D glasses, 
and you put your eye over one, you would you'd be in the red car, and if you put your eye on over, the hand over the other, you'd be in a blue car. When you're playing a game, you're for example. A game. So when you're playing a places game that is simple view or clipped, if you're playing by yourself, the game is in 3D. The second you switch to two player, you see the game from the perspective of the batter in 84 inches, and then you see the perspective of the pitcher in 84 inches. It's like having two 84 or 65 or 55 inch TVs in your room. Fantastic. Now you mentioned earlier, and something I want to make sure we cover, that unlike other companies who are making Ultra HD uh, TVs, Sony is involved in creating 4D, 4K content as well as produce as showing it on a screen. And uh, you're you're very deeply involved in making sure that we as consumers get more 4K content for our beautiful new 4K displays. Exactly. So if you look at HD. Most people were waiting for somebody to make content. Guess who they were waiting to make the content? Us. So by using, by, by we shoot in 4K. We also are scanning major films like Lawrence of Arabia, Bridge of River Kwai, at at least 4K resolution. So we are providing not only the TV, but we're also providing the content. I'm sure you're aware that if you buy our 84-inch television, Ultra HD TV, we, we are giving you as a long-term lease a 4K Ultra HD video player. On that, on that player came 10 movies like Spider-Man and Total Recall, the new Total Recall movie, classics like Bridge of River Kwai. It has film shorts and it has eye candy. And if you have the player, we send, we're going to be sending out periodic upgrades and it will continue to add movies to it. Notice that I said that the player was a, um, a, a, a long-term free lease because we're going to replace the player we leased you with our consumer um, uh, new consumer 4K Ultra HD video player later this year. And we're also developing a full 4K Ultra HD distribution um, system. So when you buy R65 or a, and 55 or 84 or hopefully I wouldn't do it, but if you bought somebody else's television set, we'll be able to provide content in 4K for those types of televisions. Now that's really important. We want, we want to go over and check out this uh, distribution stand that you have real quick. Okay. Now, as I said, uh, maybe we'll have to go around the over this way. Okay. Okay. We're getting, we're getting steered around crowds here, which of course in the uh, Sony booth is to be expected because uh, this first day of CES is exceedingly, oh hey, this is important. You see that he is actually controlling? He's actually controlling. Oh, sorry. There's, we're using a Sony tablet as the controller for the video player. And you can see that there's the, the movies I can go through, I can pick a movie and I can play it back. I can have a movie playing, I can browse for other movies. So this is how you control it. When you give the loan video player back, you get to keep the, the tablet, a present from us to you. The, and that the play, the old the 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 player that we're loaning you is going to be replaced by by this by this guy. This is actually a prototype to kind of give you an idea of what we're thinking about as the player. But all that content we gave you on those 84-inch customers for that player, they get we're going to load onto this player. Now so, this is basically a big hard disk. It is how it, it stores the movie. It stores the movies on a drive. You know, and that's it. and it's nice because it's always available and all that type of stuff. Exactly how the rest of the distribution, how we add and subtract movies, they haven't told me that yet. <laughs> okay, now will this be uh, when you buy the 65 or the 55? It won't, you won't. This won't be included. It won't be included, but but when you buy the TV, you'll be able to buy this. Okay, one more thing we want to see, and that's the OLED Ultra HD. Okay. Let's okay. go take a look around the side, this corner here, and. Um, this is another really important thing. Okay, we're going to go around the other side. We're going to go through uh, big crowds here. As I said, this is typical for the Sony booth at the first day of CES. Uh, we did get a little bit of ah, breathing room. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> and we're about to take a look at, a ultra, at an Ultra HD OLED. Yes, this is the world's first and largest 4K Ultra HD 
OLED TV. A lot of letters and a lot of numbers. The <laughs> Alphabet soup. Yeah, the big thing to remember is Sony's been making OLED products for, for years. In fact, we've actually already have sold an OLED television set for consumers. We had a little 11-inch guy. I remember that little 11-inch guy. That was several years ago. Yes. And if you're in the professional um, arena and medical or broadcast, we sell OLED monitors today. This is taking the best of the best of both worlds. We're taking the, the incredible contrast and color um, gamut of a OLED television set, and, and when you add 4K Ultra HD resol um, resolution, it's like looking through, a, through an open window. And, and I truly believe it's the best TV I have ever seen in my entire life. And you should take a look at it. Oh, I do. I, I am right now, and I did at the press conference yesterday. I'm sure I'll be back again to look at this again, because it really is stunning. Um, this is not a product that we can expect for sale this year, though, right? Um, it will be available, we always like to say, eventually. <laughs> but it's, it'll be sooner than you think. Ah, sooner than I think. Uh, okay, very good. Because you probably think nine years from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, thank you so much. Thank you so really much. appreciate your time. Take care. Take care. So that wraps up Home Theater Geeks from CES 2013. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Please tune in at twit.tv slash HTG for this and all episodes of Home Theater Geeks. And be sure to check out the specials from CES at twit.tv slash specials. So uh, until next time, geek out. <laughs>